Hey everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Raspberry Pi Robot Series. In this video, we are going to learn how to install and run the PS4 joystick in Raspberry Pi. We will also create a module out of this so that we can run it with the motor module that we created in the previous video. I upload videos on a weekly basis, so don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. So let's get started. So before we have a look at our joystick code, we first need to install our uh, drivers. Now to install them, we have a few lines of uh, code that we need to run in our terminal. So you can find the detail of the author and the details of um, each step in the description. But for now, we are just going to copy paste and we are going to see how you can run this as we go along. So we will copy the first line and we will simply paste. So the last thing we have to do here is to add this line here. So you can see this is this line. So we have to copy this and we have to add it right under by default. This script does nothing. We have to create a new line and we have to write this here and then we can press Control O to save and then enter and then we can press Control and X to exit. So this is how you can perform the installations. Once that is done, you can you can connect it using Bluetooth or you can connect it using the dongle. Now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to import our Pi game. Based on this package, we are going to detect the keystrokes then we are going to import uh, time and we will initialize our Pi game. Now we have to define our controller. So we will say that we are going to use the ID number zero. If you have more than one controller connected, then you have to change the number here. So for example, one, two, three. So it is the same as like using camera in OpenCV. Then we have controller dot uh, initialize we are going to initialize this controller and after that we are going to use uh, a dictionary by the name buttons now the idea here is that uh, by default if we are using pi game it actually detects the values of the joystick and uh, it sends out the values uh, and to get these values we have to check the analog sticks separately as you can see here these are for the analog sticks and then you have to check the button press separately and then you have to check the button release separately. So all of this is very annoying if you just want to see if a button was pressed or not and when it was released. So all of this information can be compacted into one dictionary. So we can put all the buttons, uh, the name of the buttons, for example, X, O, triangles, square, L1, R1, and so on. And then for each one of them, we can write down a value. So zero indicates it's not pressed and one indicates that it is pressed. And in the X's, we are giving uh, a dot, which means it's float. And we will have a value ranging from minus one to one. So we will have four axes because each analog stick can either go upwards and downwards and left or right. So we will have four axes. Now, what we are doing here is basically 
we are asking for the events in our Pi game and we are checking if that event is basically Joy Axis Motion. So Joy Axis Motion is basically the analog stick. So if that moves, we are going to store all the values in our axis list. This is our list that we have declared here of 000. So first we are going to store them in our axis and then we will store them back into buttons. Then we have our uh, button down. So whenever a button is pressed, it checks for it. And then based on that, it will check which uh, number are we referring to, which value number are we referring to. It will take its key and it will put a one over there. So it will replace this zero with one. If for example, the key was X, if the key was O, it will replace this with one. And then when uh, it is not pressed, when it is released, then it will put the same key as zero. So if I press the X button, it will put it as one. And when I release, it will put this as zero. So this is what all of the code over here is doing. So it's checking the analog sticks, it's checking the button presses, and it's checking when it's released. So once we have done all of that, uh, we are going to put our axes, like uh, the axes are stored in this, we are going to put them back into our buttons. So now, by the end of it, we have a long dictionary in which we have stored all the values of our button presses and our axes. Now, we have created a function out of this, and we have said that uh, we can ask for a particular key, that whether it was pressed or not, or if we don't ask for anything, return all of them. This means that if we don't ask for anything, for example, here, we are saying print get joystick. So we are saying get joystick without anything. So it will print all the values. So let's see how that works. So here you can see we are getting all the values of our joystick. So if I press the X button, you can see the value changes to one. If I press O, you can see the value changes then the triangle square, then R1, L1, R2, L2. We also have the share and options that we can change. And for the axis, we can see when I rotate it around, the values, they change. So if we don't put anything in between, it will give us all the values. But if we actually put something in between, let me copy that. Then it will only give us the value of that one particular button. So here we are talking about the share. So if I press the share button now, you can see it turns to one. So this way we can check for each particular key whether it was pressed or not. So again, we are writing this name and main over here so that if uh, this is the main code that we are running, then it will create this while loop and it will run the main again and again. But if we want to call this, we can easily call this by importing the get.js. And once we import that, we can uh, run our buttons function. So let's see how that will work. So if we go to robot main, so this is the code that we wrote before uh, for our keyboard. So let's change that. In fact, let's declare a new variable and we will write here movement is equals to, and here we will write joystick. So here we can say that we have the option of selecting keyboard and then we have the option of selecting joystick. So this time we are selecting, uh, so we can say here, if movements is equals to, is equals to joystick, then we are going to run this code. Otherwise, we will run this code. Right now we have only two, that's why we can write else. So we need to write the code over here for the joystick. So let's go up and let's first import. So we will say 
import joystick uh, module joystick module as js and then over here uh, actually did we initialize or there's no need okay so what we can do is we can write here that js dot get js and over here we can get our values and we can test it out by printing it so we can print it here and we can add a delay so that it's easier to see so if we run this there is a mistake somewhere okay we did not import the sleep function so we'll say from time import sleep and there you go so if I press it you can see now we are able to use this in our um, main module which is our robot so we can press stop and now we can ask for the particular values so we can say that uh, now we know that our joystick values are ranging from minus one to one and the left and right is also minus one to one so what we can do is we can directly send these values to our motor so what we can do now is we can say that uh, we will find all our values so the js values the joystick values are these and now we can check which ones we want to uh, look for so we will say that motor dot move so now we can write the forwards and backwards so we are going to write the axis to so we will say that the js value at axis 2 and then we have the js value at axis 1 this is the left and right and at the end we can say you can do this for 0 0.1 which is 0 0.1 seconds so we can test this out and if it doesn't work in the right direction we can add a negative sign to either one of these so let me run this and try it out so now my robot is moving but it's in the wrong direction so negative is positive and positive is negative actually for both of them so we are going to put negative here negative and then we are going to put negative here as well So if I go forward, it goes forward, backwards, left and right. So we were able to do this because our values coming from the joystick are ranging from minus 1 to 1. And uh, in our motor module, we are sending the values from minus 1 to 1. So that's why we are easily able to send the direct values so the forward and backwards and the left and right values so you can change these axes if you want we have uh, axis 3 and 4 if you prefer the right side the right analog stick uh, 